And I basically was on a mission to prove my manlyhood to my father. Uh, yeah. And what, in my mind, what better way to do that than to, you know, date or yes. to be sexual with, with yes. older girls that were more uh, educated and more experienced and, uh, and all of those things. Yeah. And it was a string of, of failed relationships. Um, and I just went from one relationship to another. Um, I equated uh, sex with love. And as long yes. as the sex was there, the love was there. And yeah. of course, that was an illusion. Yes. <laughs> and, yes. uh, and each of them failed. Yeah. Um, then I went on to join uh, the military at 17. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I joined the U.S. Army at 17 years old. Yeah. Um, I thought being around uh, soldiers, other men, might yes. help me um, find myself a as a yeah. man. Yeah. Um, and I continued that pattern of, of uh, extremes when it came to relationships. Yeah. Um, and basically, you know, even into the military, uh, every uh, lady that I met, it was um, intense, you know, sexual encounters. And yeah. the more extreme they were, the more love I, I deemed them. Uh, I, I deemed that there was more love. And I, and I, you know, I felt like I was in love with each and every person that I had yeah. an exchange with, which, in fact, uh, was not the case. Yeah. But um, so that... That takes me into the military um, when I was away at basic training. Uh, I delved into uh, prostitution um, wow. and uh, not myself, but I sought out oh prostitutes um, yeah. for that for that love sexual connection. Um, yeah. But it, it ended up being, uh, you know, of course, it was, it was they were dead ends. And uh, I returned yeah. home from my military training. Uh, basically went home to my mom and dad and and yeah. ha and had nobody when when I got yeah. home basically yeah 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 and so you went on to marry um, and your first marriage ended and then you had a second marriage and the, the your second marriage was the longest yeah yes that's correct. Yeah, and um, your second wife was the one that uh, was into um, uh, spell casting and demon release. Is that that's correct, isn't it? Right, that was the second marriage. Um, yes. Just to back, just to back up a, a little bit. Um, on my, on my window on the screen, uh, there's questions popping up yes. in the chat room. So I don't know if yeah, you see those or not, it, but okay. I, I do. <laughs> so, and I was. Um, <laughs> I, I was just looking at them. Right. Like oh, there's to, questions there. No, yeah. <laughs> feel free to. Um, I was going to park them for, for a little while, but go for it, Brad. Answer the oh. questions. Zara, Zara, Aaron, and Renee have all got questions. So go okay. for it. Well, they they popped up and then they disappeared. But what I'll what yeah. I'll do is I'll. I'll try to um, back up a little bit to the first marriage, and hopefully I can answer their questions, yes. you know, in yes. my scenario. Yes. Um, my first marriage was while I was in the military, and my first wife, um, uh, she was 13 years older than me. Yeah. Um, and I was away from my family, and I needed some kind of security. And so yeah. I entered into that, that marriage um, with blinders on, and I was married to her for six years. Uh, we had a son together, mm -hmm. and that marriage ended in her having a uh, lesbian affair with a lady she worked with at yeah. uh, the daycare that my son attended, mm. uh, which further crushed my mm. sexuality and my manhood yeah. um, pretty pretty substantially. Yeah. Um, and so that that was the first marriage. It lasted six years. Um, I immediately found someone else uh, that was also uh, older, about four years older. Mm -hmm. And um, we met in a single, um, a single uh, person's group. Yeah. Uh, she was single, I was single. And she was uh, heavily into metaphysics. And um, so it, in a very short period of time, we were, we were married. And she did a lot of dissecting and a lot of questioning and analyzing um, of, of me and yes. where I was at, my behavior, um, 
the uh, the little person in me that was con- kind of controlling my life and my behavior. And that marriage was 22 years long. Yeah. Um, she was into metaphysics. Um, she eventually went on to start a business online and did spell casting. Yeah. Um, now she did white white magic. Um, Mm -hmm. She didn't do anything um, from a negative nature or taking people's free will away or or none of that. Um, It was white magic. It was spiritual, you know, enlightenment um, type of uh, type of work that she did. But um, she she attempted to help a lot of people with their problems uh, and at the same time dissecting and and kind of breaking, you know, my yeah. life into into sections and trying to get me to understand um the challenges that i that i would face yeah. or that i yeah. needed to face to move on yeah. um and about 10 years the last 10 years of my second marriage um we had a non-physical relationship um yeah. we lived in the same house but we had nothing you know to do with each other physically for yeah. 10 for 10 years wow. and I was basically, she kind of gave up, gave up on trying to fix me. Yes. Um, and so the last, like I said, the last 10 years I were on my, I was on my own. And um, during that time, uh, my family did not approve of her lifestyle, what she uh-huh. did for a living or her perspective on spirituality, Christianity, yeah. beliefs, and things of that nature. Yeah. So we also had a son together. And on one occasion, I had two siblings that uh, reported us to CPS. Um, they said that we were full-time RVers living in an RV, traveling around the country for about two and a half years. And yeah. my second son was homeschooled. Right. And a couple of my family members did not approve of that. So um, they called Child Protective Services yeah. and the police department uh, to interview us and interview him because they didn't think it was a good environment for him to be in. Um, when it was all said and done, um, the police department <clears throat> and Child Protective Services did not see anything of a derogatory nature. The case was closed dropped but the damage had been done and my life had been interfered with by two of my siblings and that created a tremendous amount of disconnect from uh at least those two family members so um basically um i I don't want to give away the entire book (laughs) (laughs) but but basically um that that was like the start of my second when marriage you, ending. Yeah. And um, I knew that I wasn't happy in that second marriage, but I made a promise um, at the beginning of those last 10 years that I would not um, I would not leave my second son. I ended up leaving my yeah. first son behind with his mother yeah. um, for various reasons. Um, that I cover in in the yes. book, yes. but um, yes. I we don't made, give away uh, everything in the book, right? I I made that choice to stay uh, in my second marriage for my second son, and yeah. it was ten ten years of uh, yeah. of being present, but but not in the relationship at all. Yeah, yeah. So um, I'm guessing that the ending of your second marriage was actually the catalyst for you to start thinking about changing uh, behavior and and starting to work on yourself. Um, Ivy wants to know, did you feel you needed to be fixed? Did you fundamentally think that there was something wrong with you or did you just go along with what your wife talked to you about to try and keep the peace. I pretty much. That. Yeah. Pretty much. Um, I accepted what she told me as, as truth. Um, 70% of the time. Um, I knew that the changes couldn't be made by her, that they were changes yes. that I had to do. Yeah. Um, and I did a lot of soul searching and, um, 